What's good guys? Different video today. Another tip video, but different. Um, I think on either a conscious or a subconscious level, we all kind of register that when we're playing the game, we are taking the roles of our players. We are that player, right? When we're hitting, we're that player. When we're pitching, we're that player. When a ball gets hit to a fielder, we are that player, right? So, that's cool. We all get that, and a lot of people want to focus on those parts of the game to improve their gameplay, and they are very vital, but there is also a mental aspect to the game. Uh, you are also your DD team's GM and manager, so you decide who makes the team, when to pull a pitcher, if a substitution's needed on offense or defense, uh, who gets benched, who doesn't make the roster, stuff like that. Um, so that's what I'm focusing on in this video is how to make the right decisions to set yourself up for success so that you can play better and only focus on playing when you load into a ranked game or something like that. So we can see we have our team here. Um, one of the big things I would stress is do not get attached to players. If a player is struggling for you, do not feel like you have to keep using them and maybe things will turn around. Some players just aren't for everybody, right? A lot of people like Sammy Sosa, and you might think these stats look really good. I don't, because that was on All-Star, right? I think he played one to two Hall of Fame games for me, something like that. Uh, most of this was on All-Star or in event games. Those are not good enough stats for my level of play at those lower levels of difficulty. So he got benched, right? And his replacement, Griffey, is batting 506, and a lot of this is rank stats. So, for me, that's obvious, right? I made a choice to put my team in a better position to win. Obviously, Sammy Sosa was a really cool name going into this. Obviously, he has a really cool bat flip, but that doesn't matter if you never get to see that bat flip. Um, the second thing I would stress is how to structure your lineup. Uh, I know some people that maybe didn't play real-life baseball or don't keep up with baseball uh, might not know how to structure a lineup. That's what I'm going to show you how to do. Leadoff spot is traditionally somebody who is fast, that you hit well with, that you feel good about getting on base with. For me, that's Mike Trout. He hits great for me. He has 99 speed. Obviously, uh, for you guys, that might be somebody like Eric Davis or Ricky Henderson or, somebody, or Trey Turner, somebody like that. I personally wouldn't put Trey right there because of something we'll talk about later, but in general, something like that is your prototypical leadoff man. Two-hole is um, usually either your best hitter or your second best hitter on the team. For me, it is my best hitter. It's my cap. He is an absolute stud. Uh, he plays shortstop for me. That's where he's at. Uh, Three-hole for me is usually either, like I said, your best hitter or your second best hitter. For me, it is my second best hitter. It is Chipper Jones. Four and five are typically like comfort picks that hit the ball pretty hard that you still feel comfortable with and you feel good with with runners on scoring position. Uh, with the way clutch works this year, maybe you want people in these spots that have really high clutch. Babe obviously hits that requirement. Uh, Jorge does not, but he is a switch hitter, so I do feel more comfortable with him in that spot. Without him there, I could have back-to-back -back lefties. That's another thing. You don't typically want to have the same handedness batting back to back because then if your opponent puts in somebody out the pin say you have two lefties back to back and he brings in the lefty um, that lefty's gonna have a lot easier time shutting down your offense that inning uh, six is usually what some people call the secondary leadoff spot you want another fast player but somebody that you also hit well with in case your four and five get on uh, seven eight and nine are whatever, right? Those are the three least comfortable players in your lineup, three players that maybe you struggle with the most compared to your other players. Like I said, I would not have players in your lineup that you don't like hitting with, but uh, these are your least favorite, your least comfortable players that don't perform quite as well as the other. Uh, or if you're running a god squad like me, it's probably going to be players that don't have as much power. Um, your bench, right? So the bench does not have nearly as much utility as it has in years past. So you might want to do cheeky things like uh, put Otani on the bench so you can have that fifth st or sixth starting pitcher if you need him. Um, 
Other than that, mainly use your bench for captain boost and uh, utility options, right? Maybe you want to make a defensive sub. Uh, Trey's a good option for that. Plays the outfield, plays short, plays second, plays third. Uh, same for Jazz, another good uh, utility option. Or you can use it to platoon players. Me personally, I have the God Squad, so I don't really feel the need to platoon anybody. But uh, you could like platoon Rod Carew and Trey Turner if you want to. Starting pitchers, doesn't matter. There's only five of them. Doesn't really matter how you order them. I'm a little OCD, so I like to have you know them in order of my confidence in them. But in general, it doesn't really matter. Uh, your bullpen does, though. I would order your bullpen by how you are comfortable with a pitcher, right? Your closer should be the most comfortable guy out of your pen. When he comes in, he should seal the deal. The game should be over. You should be extremely confident when your closer comes in. Your setup should be guys that you think will not blow a lead for you. Um, I don't really have that structured right now, but if I did, that would probably be around about how it is. And then uh, these first few spots are just kind of guys that, you know, they can eat innings if you need. Uh, if your starter gets touched up, they might be your first option out of the pen. And uh, I'm going to get into some gameplay situations now to show you guys, like, you know, how to make the right decision at the right time. So another part of being your team's GM is you also decide where your team plays at, right? So I would advise you guys to play to your strengths. If you're somebody who hits the ball a lot and you hit pretty well, but your pitching may be subpar or it's just average, maybe you want to play at a park like Shield Woods or Capitol Lane or um, Laughing Mountain, somewhere with high elevation where if you put the ball in play, there's a good chance it's going to be a hit those parks might cater to you. If you are somebody who is more pitcher focused and you might hit one to two perfect perfects a game that are usually home runs, maybe you want a pitcher's park like Wagon Man or Blue River or uh, Oak Street is another popular one. I would urge you guys to not play at major league fields. Um, often they can cause lag issues, uh, they can cause desyncs, they can cause your console to run worse if you're on older hardware or lower uh, lower performing new gen consoles like the white Xbox or I think PlayStation has some equivalent of that. Um, so overall, uh, I would advise maybe like spring training fields or classics or minor league fields for me personally. Another part of strategy and being the coach is uh, you can pretend like you're Kevin Cash. You can pitch openers if need be. So, um, let's say I'm between, let's say Pedro's tired, you Darvish is tired, and Grayson is tired, right? So I have my fifth starter, somebody I'm not very confident with, somebody I'm not very good with, and then I have my absolute ace of my rotation, and they are both full energy. What should I do? Uh, pitch an opener, pitch an opener. Pitch one of your relievers to start the game and warm up these two out the pen to start the game and uh, see how good your opponent is, right? Do you need your ace pitcher? Is this going to be a sweaty game? Is this a game where you need to have dominant pitching? Or can you get away with pitching one of your worst pitchers in your rotation and pitching that five starter? So you would pitch your opener and then you would structure your lineup. Uh, if you're cap glitching, I'll show you what I do. Uh, I move him from DH to shortstop, where he has 99 fielding and whatnot. And then I sub out David Wright for Trey Turner. Um, obviously, Trey is a really good option because he has 125 clutch. He's a good DH. He's very fast. And uh, if you guys want to utilize that, you can. So, this is another part of the game, is playing matchups, right? So, let's say this is not the first inning with one out. Let's say this is the ninth inning with one out, and you have a one-to-two run lead, and Yenir Cano is on the border of being like yellow to red energy. Uh, typically, the way I approach that is if a pitcher is yellow energy, I try to get them through the situation that they're in. If a pitcher is red energy, pretty much under no means and am I going to pitch with them. When a pitcher is tired or has low confidence, the ball gets hit harder, and uh, you give up more hits. You give up higher exit velos. They start missing spots more often. Uh, so try to not play with that. So if this was the ninth inning with one out, let's say they have a lefty and a switch hitter coming up or something like that. 
or a lefty and a lefty. Obviously, right here, I'm putting in the lefty to get these last two batters of the game. Even if your opponent puts in the substitution, at least you made them put in that substitution. It's a player off their bench that they're not as comfortable with. Um, if it was like, if it was like how it is right now, where it's a lefty and a righty, typically what I'm thinking is comfort, right? I want a comfort pick. I want somebody that's really good, right? So they would have to face a lefty and a righty anyway. It's not like old MLBs. You cannot. A pitcher has to. If a pitcher starts a new inning or comes in out the bullpen in an inning, they have to face three batters before they can get pulled. If it goes to the next inning, it's forgotten about. But for that inning, they have to face at least three batters. So whoever you come in with right now, you are stuck with. So what I would do with a lefty and a righty with one out in the ninth, I would go with my comfort pick. I would go with somebody I'm very comfortable with, no matter of the handedness. Uh, I'm not sure what the statistics say. It would probably say bring in the lefty, so that runner has a lower chance of getting on base. But in general, I'm going to pick a comfort pick here, so my pick would be Gagne. I would bring in Gagne. He would pitch to this batter, uh, and then he would pitch to the next batter, and if he gave up a run... Then we would go to overtime. This is another aspect of the game that I see people overlook a lot of times, and that is managing base runners, right? There's a lot of ways to manage base runners, um, but I see at low ranks people are not having fun because if they give up a single, then they have 99 speed Ricky Henderson or Trey Turner or somebody of that archetype on base and a single turns into a double, which then turns into a triple. And if you're giving up triples, every time you give up a hit, you're not going to have a good game, right? So you got to manage these base runners. Um, your pitch speed does matter. So if you're sitting here throwing off speed, um, you're not going to be as likely to throw the runner out. So do keep that in mind. Um, I'm not saying be predictable because end of the day, you're still trying to get this batter out, not just the base runner. Uh, there's a couple of other methods. There is the pickoff move, which you do by holding the left trigger, and then you're going to tap the button to the base. There are two different pickoff moves. If you tap, it is a quick pick. Oh, if good. you hold the button, it is like a power, like velocity pickoff move. Uh, for me, quick picks work most, most of the time uh, if they are stealing. There are other ways to manage a runner. There is the pitch out, which you do by holding the left bumper and hitting A. Uh, I would not recommend it, but it is a pretty much guaranteed out if the runner goes. Uh, so if you're going to pick it, uh, pitch out, you have to be pretty confident that the runner is going to go. Uh, otherwise, you just gave a ball to the batter in the box, and his likelihood of getting a hit against you just went up a lot. Uh, the other and most commonly used method is called the slide step, and you do that by picking what pitch you want to throw and then holding the left trigger and then doing your pinpoint motion or your analog motion. And you can see it gives him a different delivery to the plate. It's a little bit faster. It's going to give you a better chance of throwing that runner out. Another coaching decision that you guys might not be too familiar with that you might not think about is uh, defensive subs, right? It's a very overlooked aspect of the game, but let's say I'm in the ninth inning and I'm up by a run or two and there's a runner on base or... I just don't want to give up the run, period. Uh, one thing you can start doing is looking at your weaker defensive players and putting in stronger defensive players to play those positions, right? So we could, like, defensively sub uh, Rod Carew for Jazz Chisholm. Now we have a diamond defender at second base with really good reactions. It improves our chances of getting a double play here. It improves our reactions of getting an out here, or our chances of getting an out here. Stuff like that. Uh, other defensive subs I would think about, maybe Trout, maybe you have somebody with really good reaction you can put in center field, uh, maybe Chipper, Chipper plays bad defense for me, I don't know what it is, uh, maybe you have Manny Machado on the bench and you'd rather put him at first base than Babe Ruth, uh, or maybe you can put somebody with better reaction out there for uh, Tatis, he's serviceable. He would not be somebody I would instantly think of uh, defensively subbing. And that is defensive substitutions. Uh, another thing, kind of going with that, is shifts, right? 
Uh, I would not advise you guys to have auto shifts on, but if you are going to turn it off, then you need to know how to shift. Um, you can see there is a shift for double plays. There is a shift for if people are trying to bunt. Uh, and in general, I would familiarize yourself with infield shifts and bunt D shifts, right? Because at low levels, you're going to see people with 99 speed trying to bunt. And if you do not adjust your shift because you have auto shift off, then uh, they will probably be safe. So what we would do, say this batter's trying to bunt, we will bring this third baseman either to corners in or bunt defense. Uh, for me, I would probably prefer, prefer in or corner in. And then we can bring our first baseman halfway or corner in. But keep in mind, if you do this, you are not going to be able to pick off that runner at first. Another way that you could... Uh, think of shifting is with your outfield and uh, this would mostly apply to probably like custom parks or maybe some of the newer minor league parks that they added uh, the outfield dimensions can be very weird it can cause your fielders to play in weird spots leave huge gaps that uh, balls tend to drift to most of the time so let's say we were at one of those newer ones Maybe we would want our center fielder to be deep because at some of those created stadiums, they play very shallow a lot of the times. And uh, let's say it's one of those with like a weird divot in the wall that the ball loves to go to. Uh, you can shift his position also. Shifts are very underutilized, and I think they're a good part of the game that a lot of players don't take advantage of. Obviously, it does take up some pause time, but uh, most people aren't using three minutes of pause time in a game anyway. And uh, that's how you manage your team, pretty much. That's pretty much all the decisions you can make uh, as a manager, as a GM, stuff like that, to try to help you win more games. And if this was helpful at all, feel free to like and subscribe. Peace.